Good evening, everybody, or good night, since it's a quarter to midnight here in Toronto. I want to try doing some medium wave DXing with the Texan PL330, but with an external antenna. I know that a number of YouTubers have been playing around with external antennas, including me with the Sanjian. Um, some of that's sort of by coincidence, at least on my end, because I had noticed that with the my, my relatively new uh, MLA 30 plus antenna connected to the Sanjian, it showed surprisingly good effectiveness as a medium wave antenna, which given that it isn't set up for that, it's set up to null noise on shortwave and is not rotatable. I didn't have any expectation that it would be usable on medium wave at all, but it is. Um, the other thing is that I've always known that the PL330 uh, does support the use of an of an external uh, medium wave antenna through an undocumented feature, and so we're on 880, which is um, WCBS, if I remember correctly. Let me just look on my computer over here where I have my list up. Yeah, uh, 880 is WCBS from New York. Yeah, and that's usually my test. And you can get it on often. There it is. Right? And I don't know what the bandwidth is set for on this. Oh, that's not very good. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so we've got the bandwidth wide open now on the 330. Right? So we're just coming in if we rotate the radio a little bit. Okay, but if you hold down while it's in medium wave mode, if you hold down, it switches the inputs and allows you to plug in. And I mean, the distance, the difference should be obvious. Right? It comes in very well. And this works beautifully with the Sanjian uh, ATS909X2 that I usually use as my desktop radio. So let's just, out of curiosity, see how ETM works on medium wave. Now, keep in mind that ETM is only marginally useful on medium wave because, I mean, you know, you can put it in manual and just rotate through the... Uh, through the band quite quickly, even compared to FM, it's comparatively small band, right? Um, so, you know, that's why I've never tried it. Well, I did try it earlier on tonight before I decided to redo this video, so I know what's going to happen. Okay, so let's do the ETM scan. There we go. Oh, you know, I typed in a number, so it was out of ETM mode. Okay, so let's see what we do. We should do better than we did when I tried this earlier on today, because as more of North America becomes dark, there's more to listen to. And I actually got 54 channels when I tried it before, and here we've got, what is that, 97? So let's just, I won't... I'll pull out a few sort of distant ones that I recognize. I'm not really going to try to do a band scan tonight. That's the other thing I kind of rejected when... Uh, one of the other things is with the bandwidth set so, broad, set so wide, there will be some spillover from station to station. There is probably some advantage in turning the bandwidth down to 3.5 here. With your PSL, speak with this is Sportsnet, this is local. Uh, but at times it certainly was nice to see that breeze. Overnight tonight, not a lot of a breeze. Not a lot of Talking program in Western Red Cedar, pressure treated, tracks. So we're all local here, still. Ask that question a lot lately. Local. 700 would be Cincinnati if it's coming in. Seven forties local. Power, 
770 is New York, WABC. So what's interesting is that in fact I can tell you already that this ETM scan isn't that useful because it's uh, it's essentially, you know, it's it's just not skipping enough. Right? There's a lot of a lot of um, of stations that it's finding that there really isn't much there and you gain very little benefit for using ETM as opposed to uh, you know just putting it in manual mode and just you know going through it 10 kilohertz at a time as you would so let's now I, I you'll notice that I changed the bandwidth right the bandwidth has some effect and if because of the extremely wide AM bandwidth that the PL330 has there was, you know, some sort of cross crosstalk from station to station. Maybe if we lowered the bandwidth to something a little bit more reasonable, like the 3.4, it'd be nice to have like a 5 in there. It'd be nice to have you know, another intermediate bandwidth setting on this. But let's do another search and just, just see what we get and see if that gives us something that's a little bit more reasonable. As always with the Texan radios, I'm interested in how the bandwidth setting affects the scan, and this might be in a, a, a situation where you get fewer identified stations. We got 52. So that's an example of where the bandwidth setting, keeping the bandwidth too wide, means that it finds too much. It, does essentially exactly the opposite of what you expect it to do when it's in shortwave modes. All right? So, again, as it shows, when you're using ETM on a Texan, play with the bandwidth switch. So that's useful. 52 is a useful number. So what do we got? The larger issue here isn't so much about the tampering. The 550, I think, is Buffalo. George, go ahead, Anthony. This is, of course, Sportsnet here in Toronto. Toronto Airport Authority unveiled new prior to oil 640. This is all Toronto stuff. 740 is also Toronto. 760 could be Detroit. Yeah, it probably is. WJR from Detroit. We should see WABC. It's not finding WABC. 820s local, with Zoomer, that's uh, Radio Canada, French CBC, this is as we were talking about before, WCBS. Um, not sure what that would be. That's probably Buffalo. This is CFRB here in Toronto. That's probably WBZ from Boston. That sometimes comes in well. This is WEPN from New York. Oh, sorry. It is not. This is Chum from Toronto. Swing lines right base hit center field, and Peralta has given the raise the lead. Going to then For small. Wait, I have that. That's Chum from Toronto. Here against the Blue Jays. And this is Hamilton. Not sure what 1160 would be. This is uh, WPHT from Philadelphia. This could be WHT from Cleveland. Most likely is. This is local. Cool. 
This could be uh, WCKY from Cincinnati. It does come in fairly often. This is local. Today's birthday was yesterday. It was so there you have it. You know, is the ETM scan useful if you're trying to do a medium wave DXing? I think my answer is not terribly. I think you'd be better off to put it in manual mode and just step through the stations. The um, muting on the Texan is not a problem in this use case. It's just like, who cares? It doesn't matter because you go, you know, step, step, step. It's not, it's, 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 it's just not a big deal. Um, as it is on the short wave band and even on the FM band, it's, it's more irritating. But in medium wave, yeah, it doesn't matter. At least not to me. Um, however, this with an external antenna is pretty good. It's not bad. Um, if you, when you're finished with using the antenna, I should do this before I forget. You just hold down. Again, you have to be in medium wave. This. And you'll see, plugging and unplugging the antenna makes no difference. So, you know, so that certainly is a uh, is a usable feature on the radio. Although I'm not convinced that it works quite as well as if you uh, were to compare with something like this handy. Yeah, I'll just bring it in here. It's not going to you know, put it flat. So that's what we're doing. Oh, let's see. I hadn't actually intended to do this, so all right. So here we go. We'll turn this engine on. In July, the automaker says truck sales jumped twenty percent from last year. I think it's more. Sen I think it's more sensitive on medium wave. With the, uh, I could try. You see, even though this is incredibly weak, it's still there, right? It's still there, and the noise floor seems better. It's the same antenna. It's coming out of the same box, same plug. So, I don't know. I think, I suspect that there's, I mean, I, I, think, I think the external antenna works beautifully with the Texan. Here, we'll just put it on top here. I think it's great. I think they... My suspicion is that Sanjian outperforms it, and my guess is that the reason why it's a hidden feature and not an advertised feature on the uh, Texan is because it wasn't quite working as well as they liked, or I mean possibly because they also felt like differentiating, you know, like the 990 which came out shortly after, which is much more expensive radio, was more of a direct comp competitor to this. But uh, it's certainly well worth playing with. And um, and certainly the ability to use an external uh, medium wave antenna on a small radio like the 330 is potentially just a really kind of groundbreaking thing because there aren't that many that do. So um, for everybody who has you know a variety of loops and whatnot, that I you know most of those will couple, but so you could use them without plugging them in, but you know, why not give it a try, right? Get the cable and, and see how it works. As always, the PL330 is certainly a fun radio to experiment with, you know, and well worth having. All right, thanks very much, and have a good evening.